hey, it works. It's been a week now. I'm alone. I'm underprepared. And I'm trying to find any place safe in this world. Outbreak happened sometime around the end of August in China. The early part of September, the Chinese government quarantined their entire country. They cut off the phone lines, even their satellites went dark. There was no internet access, there was nothing. Sometime around mid September, the rumors were that the Chinese government was bombing their cities, they ended up killing more living than dead. Mid-September, there were cases reported in Hong Kong and Australia and Japan, and then by the end of September, the first cases were reported in the United States. I'm getting pretty low on water, and the creek bed I was just walking along joined up to a pretty good-sized river here. So. This water is water I got out of a hot water heater at, in a house, and I got about one more sip. When you can find a water source like this, you can't pass it up. So I'm gonna go fill up my bottle here. And when you get water out of a river like this, you really don't want to drink it straight from the river. You can. Uh, it's fast moving. I went out to the fast moving part to fill this up. But really you want to filter it or I really should boil it. I don't have time to stop to start a fire and boil it. And this is a plastic container, which makes it much, much tougher. But I do happen to have in my bag some water purification tablets. Two of these tablets kills anything in the water. You just have to get two out, plunk them down in your water, shake it up. Now they take about 30 minutes to work, so I can't drink from this water for at least 30 minutes. While I'm stopped here, pretty nice spot. Figure I'll show you what I carry with me. I don't like to fight zombies. If I have to, I carry a pretty big machete. Uh, this is something I got before all of this happened, uh, and it works pretty well. I learned early on that guns make way too much noise. I also carry my old diving, my old scuba diving knife. The uh, scuba knife is nice because it's got a titanium blade, which won't ever rust, and it holds an edge for a very long time. Uh, this is a knife that I use uh, if I have to skin an animal or something like that. And then because you can never have too many knives, I also carry a pocket knife. This knife is my everyday knife if I need to cut through a piece of wood or cut the food that I'm eating or something like that. This is the one that I use. It's an old cheapo and if it gets broken, uh, I have better knives. And I'd rather put the wear and tear on this one than on the nicer blades uh, without any place to sharpen them. This is my backpack. This is a standard military issue backpack. I built it as a bug out bag before all of this happened, thinking I would never need it. Inside of there, I have my coat, which has come in very handy. Um, and if the weather is any indication, it's going to get pretty cold tonight. I have a boonie hat when it's raining. It's nice to be able to keep the rain off. I have a first aid kit. Not just one first aid kit, but a second one in a waterproof container. This one is much smaller. has some band-aids and Q-tips and sterile wipes and that sort of thing. Nothing helps make a fire like a tree saw. Yet another blade. Mine is broken. Clearly it's well used. I have a small lantern. I have one 
cotton ball left. I had this whole bag full of cotton balls when I started on this trip. I have one left. These were all soaked in uh, petroleum jelly for starting fires. And I have a magnesium fire starter. All right, with a flint on one side, you scrape some magnesium uh, and then strike the flint and that all lights the fire. I used to watch all those survival shows and I always wondered how come none of them carried a lighter, regular old Bic lighter. Want to start a fire? There you go. Not just one, two. When I first started out here through the woods, the bugs were crazy. I found this in a house and it has been really valuable. If two old kind of grungy apples, I'm about to eat one of them as my breakfast this morning. I found an apple tree in somebody's backyard not too long ago. These were on the ground. They're pretty soft. They don't taste very good, but they are sweet and there is sugar and there is energy. And the last thing I carry, besides the stocking cap, is my old phone. The only pictures I have of my son are in here. I don't have any way to charge it. Hopefully one day I can find a generator or something and charge it. One, one thing I can tell you, if you're gonna do this, get printed pictures of your children and your loved ones. All right, it looks like it's pretty clear here. So I'm gonna go ahead and eat my breakfast. Um, and uh, I guess I can talk a little bit. It was the, the first week of October, President of the United States declared martial law. There was a curfew at first from dusk until dawn. All non-essential personnel were supposed to stay in their houses overnight. I was an author, so I worked at home. I spent a lot of time watching all of this happen from the safety of my living room. It was just before Halloween. People were ordered to stay in their homes at all times. Couldn't go out at all. Couldn't go out during the night, couldn't go out at day. Anyone seen in the street was considered infected. They were shot on sight. There were riots around the country. Hundreds of thousands of people rioted over this martial law and they killed them all before they learned how serious they were. The news said that the National Guard would be making food deliveries every couple of days to people's houses. I never saw them on my street. They certainly never came to my house. Time to go. I'm here at a pine tree uh, because I wanted to talk about not passing up any opportunities that you may come across. All the wood here is wet. Everything on the ground is wet and it takes forever to start a fire unless you have dry tender. These pine trees don't drop their limbs when they die and there are all these little tiny twigs here. So you can pick all these off, get a good handful of this kind of stuff. It's up off the ground so it's not wet. It's full of pine sap so it burns fast. And it's full of little tiny twigs that you can keep. So I'm going to take all of this and throw it in the top of my backpack here. And tonight when it's time to start my fire I won't have to find tinder if I can't find it wherever I stop for the night. One last treasure I found is an old water bottle. In the old days it was trash. Now it's treasure. That's another quart of water I can carry. I was a fan of zombie movies. I was a prepper. I thought I had three months worth of food. I ran out in four weeks. If I could go back in time, I would have stocked a hundred rolls of toilet paper. I would have stockpiled big lighters or some kind of lighter. During the quarantine, I had a neighbor that was notoriously for being an alcoholic. And one night he came to my house and traded me 10 pounds of rice for one bottle of liquor. I wish I'd had a hundred bottles of liquor. About two weeks ago, my neighbor stopped responding. We'd set up a small black market around the neighborhood, trading what we had extra of for 
something they didn't have any of. I risked going out one night. I walked through my backyard, which was pretty private, to my neighbor's house and looked in their sliding window. Steve and Joan were zombies. I, I didn't see their children and I'm glad, glad I didn't. This forest is tough going. <laughs> There's no path. I don't know, it, it seems to go on forever. I'm, I'm trying to head west. Eventually I'll turn south, I think. Uh, living here in Pennsylvania, it was too, it's too cold for too long to have a good growing season. And if we're gonna try and build some something, if we're gonna try and find some other people or build a group, something like that, we're gonna need a longer growing season. No more importing food from Mexico. If you can't do it yourself now, nobody's gonna do it for you. That trip to see my neighbors proved to be my downfall. I believe the zombies have a crazy sense of smell. The day after I went to my neighbor's house, they were piled up outside mine. I don't know how far they came from. I don't know where they were. For a week, they banged on my door and windows. You couldn't sleep. There was nothing. I, I had to get out of there. One day, I got up in my second story window and shot them all. My neighbors, my friends. You just, I, I can't tell you how, how crazy it was. Gunshots brought them from miles around. There were probably 20 that I shot outside my house and the next day there were hundreds all around my house. That's why I don't carry a gun now. It's, it causes too much noise and they come from f all around. I loaded up my bug out bag, got in my truck, rolled up the garage door and drove through a crowd of people. Used to be people, now they're zombies. I lost two tires getting out of my driveway. Something punctured my radiator. I made it. I made it less than a mile on the rims before I abandoned the truck and struck out on foot. I gotta get in someplace. I gotta find someplace warm for tonight. It's starting to rain. It's gonna get really cold. Or every time they just never give up just keep following no matter what you do there they are okay I found this place I think it's gonna work for the night I'm looking for anything I can use in here water anything to eat there's no food anywhere the government called a quarantine sealed everybody up in their house and there were, there's two bottles of water those will be great while everybody was sealed up in their house they ate all their food all the houses are empty oh, sh seems safe tonight. <clears throat> safe enough for tonight anyways. I do need to work on some security. Garage doors pretty easy to shake open or something like that. Uh, so I found a 
pipe and a stick. Back on a shelf. And with these kind of garage doors, it's pretty simple. You just need to get something through the rail. just never stop coming. They just keep coming after me. This is the reason I don't want to be outside tonight. myself every time, every, every day, why do I keep going when everything I know is dead, everything I love is dead. And there's just something, you just get up every day and take the next steps. Every day, you get up and find something to eat, find something to drink. I, I, I guess that's what they call a survival instinct, I don't know, but I can't give up. I can't ever give up. I will admit I haven't done a lot of talking over the last five weeks. It's been kind of nice to have a camera to talk to. It's been showing about a sliver of battery for the last little while, and i got to find some way to charge it. If I could find some solar panels or something somewhere, maybe I can work up a way to charge the battery on this thing. I think it's going to go dead sometime pretty soon, though, so until I can figure out how to charge it, this might be it. I lucked into a kerosene lamp at the last place that has a little bit of gas left so nice to have a little light in the darkness here if anybody ever finds this just keep going whatever you do I hope you learn something I hope something in what I can tell you helps I hope I can find a way to charge this battery but if I don't uh, this was my run I guess that's about it